Once your base is in, mix some hydrocal to the consistency of heavy cream. Using strips of paper towel about two inches, three inches wide, dip them into the hydrocal and begin laying them over your base, overlapping and smoothing as you go. You will want three to four layers over the whole area. After all the paper towels are in place, Take your leftover hydrocal and brush over to smooth all seams and further strengthen the hydrocal. You will want a variety of rock castings ready for the next step. There are a wide variety of molds available and they get cast in hydrocal. Next, mix some Structolite till it's like peanut butter. Test lay your stones in place to see where you like them. Then start brushing the backs of the stone and the face of the hydrocal with water. You have to do this or the, the dry castings will soak the water in so quick that the Structolite won't bond to it. And apply Structolite either to the base or the back of the castings. It's kind of like laying tile. Press in place and add the next one, working in small areas. When you have an area set in place, take a brush and work side to side to blend the pieces together. This should fill all the gaps and make the stone look more consistent. Sometimes small pieces can be used to fill large gaps. The Structolite is fairly slow setting, so if you don't like something, you have about 20 minutes to pull it and change it. After your stonework is all in and dry, it's time to start thinking about color. I like to use the Woodland Scenics colors, but any water-based colors will work. It's best to start with your lighter shades first. I'm using a yellow ochre to highlight just some of the stones on the cliff face. My next color is a burnt umber, and again, it's more for highlight. However, if you were modeling the southwest, you would want more of these first two colors and less of the grays. I follow the burnt umber with the stone gray, using it more as a wash. This allows it to run into the cracks and crevices, and it won't overpower the lighter color highlights. Apply a few drops to your brush and dip it in the water before applying. I do the same with the slate gray, which is darker, but I stay more in the joints in the shadowed areas. Once the stone color is in, I use an earth brown, again more as a wash and I only use it on areas where dirt and debris would accumulate. The final color is the grass green and apply it to areas where grass or weeds may grow, any level area, and some of the stones where soil could build up and plants take root. The key is to start light with colors until you find the shade you like. You can always go over lighter colors and darken them, but if you put it on heavy and think it's too dark, it's really hard to lighten it back up. Different locations have different colorations, so if you're modeling a specific area, a few minutes to research the geography can dramatically improve your realism. All of the materials used on this clinic are available at our store. Just click on the store icon at the end of the video.